Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 8. As you can see, I have some incredible components here. This is going to be an extremely high-end water-cooled build. What I'm most excited about is that it's going to involve a lot of modding because it's a theme build. The theme is a nuclear reactor. I haven't chosen a name yet for this build. I thought I'd let all of you choose the name, so put it in the comments. This is not all of the components going into the build. There's also the raw materials for the mods, the fittings, the coolant, and a few other components, but you'll see all of them during the build log. This build log is going to be a little bit different. My past build logs I've made for people getting into water cooling for the first time. This build log is more for people getting into modding for the first time. Anyway, now it's time for an overview of the components. Okay, I have the Asus Rampage 4 Extreme, Intel Core i7-3930K, 32GB of Corsair Dominator Platinum, 3 MSI GTX 680s, 2 OCZ Vertex 4 256GB SSDs, a Corsair AX1200i, the case is the Silverstone Tamjin TJ11. The water cooling components, I have a bunch of water blocks from EK as always, these are all CSQ Nickel Plexi, except for the EK Supremacy Elite, which is full nickel. So I have a water block for the Rampage 4 Extreme, three water blocks for the GTX 680s, and also backplates. The radiators, I have three Black Ice SR1s, a 480mm and two 360mm. I have two Coolant's PMP450S. In combination with these, I'm using the clear version of the Bits Power Upgrade Kit 150, so that's the reservoirs as well. Also, the Bits Power Mod Kit, the Black Sparkle version, and the D5 Pump Top, the clear version. The radiator fans I'm using are the new Noise Blocker E Loop. And I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but I'm really excited about these fans. They're an absolutely incredible fan. You'll get a good look at these during the build log. I'm also using some Animax TB Appalish fans and I have a bunch of extra components here. Some ModSmart Vandal switches, some LEDs and also a Bits Power X station. So that's an overview of most of the components. Now it's time to take a look at a little bit of what I have in mind for the case. Now first of all to follow these case mods you need to be familiar with the case. So I'm going to put links on the screen to my review on the TJ11, also client builds 4 and 5 because both of those were into the TJ11. Now I've pulled apart the case, I've removed the two hard drive cages from the bottom compartment, I've removed the entire front panel, also the two ducts and 180mm fans from the mid plate and I've also just removed the motherboard tray. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is my radiator positioning. I'm going to mount a 480 into the bottom compartment. The reason I'm not mounting a 560 is because I need a little bit more room down there. You'll see why later. I'm mounting a 360 onto the mid plate. And I'm also going to mount another 360 into the 5.25 inch bays. What I'm currently working on here is a panel to cover the existing holes in the mid plate because I'm not going to use them. They're in the wrong places and they just look messy. I'm also working on some blanking panels to go around the motherboard tray and I've designed it so that these panels are going to hide all of the cables that go to the motherboard. It's going to make things incredibly clean. I've already spent a lot of time measuring and cutting these panels out but there's still a lot of work to be done. As you can see I've marked out some holes that need to be cut and drilled so that's what I'm going to move on to now. The material that I'm using here is 1.5 millimeter aluminium. I'm going to need to paint all of this aluminium also because it's bare. Now the first thing I'm about to drill into here is the vertical supports that go between the top panel and the mid plate. They also act as the slides for the removable motherboard tray. When I removed the ducts, these actually go down to the ducts. They don't reach the mid plate. So without the ducts, there's about a 30 millimeter gap between the mid plate and these supports, which means the structural integrity of the case is just destroyed. The motherboard tray is basically just flopping around. So I needed to figure out a way of fixing these back to the mid plate. And I ended up killing two birds with one stone because my idea for the blanking plates, which, you know, vastly improves aesthetics, 
actually also fixes this problem. I'm now drilling some holes in the lower blanking plate to attach it to the vertical supports, which you can see in the background. You can also see the holes that I've just drilled into them. And all of this I'm going to bolt together because the entire case is bolted and screwed together. There's no rivets. It's also all made out of aluminium. So I'm going to continue that. Everything that I use will be aluminium and it will all be bolted together. Now, this lower blanking plate meets up with the mid plate at a, a 90 degree angle. And I don't have a bending machine, so I'm going to use some angle plate. I have some nice two millimeter aluminum angle plate. And I'm going to bolt it to the mid plate and also to this blanking plate. So I'm just marking out some the holes that I need to drill. And now I'm going to cut out the angle plate, which you can see just there. I've cut a length of angle plate. I've also measured everything out. And I'm now drilling the holes in the angle plate to attach it to the blanking plate. I'm now drilling the final holes in the blanking plate. And that's it. It's now time to do a test fit. So I've bolted everything together and I'm now going to fit it back into the case to make sure all of my measurements are correct and everything fits in perfectly. Once I've confirmed that, I'll then move on to sanding everything back and painting it. Now, I've bolted everything together with M3 button head Allen key bolts. Also, M3 washers on either side and M3 nuts. So, you can now see how this part of it comes together. Remember, at this point, the panels are still very rough. There's a lot of filing and sanding that I need to do. Now, for a quick look around the back, you can see how the vertical supports don't actually reach the mid plate and how this blanking panel fixes that problem. This design is actually even stronger than the original design. Okay, I'm going to come back to the blanking plates. I'm now doing some work on the front panel mod and I'm really excited about this mod. I'm not going to talk too much about it yet. This is only part of it. What I'm cutting out here is some 10 millimeter smoke plexi. It's amazing looking material. As you can see, I'm cutting it out with a jigsaw. And this is a perfect tool for the job because with thick material like this, you really need a perfectly perpendicular cut. And a jigsaw is going to give you that every time. It's also really easy to get a straight cut with a jigsaw. If you have problems, you can put something next to it that's straight and just work up against it. If I was getting into modding for the first time, the first power tool I would buy would be a Dremel. After that, I'd probably go for a cordless drill, and after that, it would definitely be a jigsaw. They're incredibly useful. They hardly go through any blades. I mean, compared to a Dremel, you know, Dremels go through heaps of blades, and you can make cuts in seconds. Anyway, I'm now going to show you what this plexi is for. So here I have the front panel of the TJ11, and you can see what I'm doing, but keep in mind, this alone is not the mod. It's also what's behind this but you'll see that coming up. Now you can see I've drilled four holes, two on either side, and you can see where I've drilled them is actually going to be out of sight, because remember, this is smoke plexi, it's transparent. If I drilled the holes anywhere else, you would have been able to see them. I'm now tapping some M4 threads into the 10 millimeter smoke plexi. So, you know, the entire case, as I've said, is bolted and screwed together. I wanted to continue that through my mods. There was a number of ways I had to attach the plexi, but you know, the quality doing things this way is at its highest. So I'm now mounting the plexi into position, and this is some really nice material. At this thickness, it's incredibly strong. It's actually quite heavy. The transparency is good. It's not too dark. It's going to be perfect for what I have in mind. I'm using black M4 button head Allen key bolts to mount it into position and they just look factory, they're really clean. So you can see how clean this config is, I'm really happy with it. And it's like this front panel was actually designed for this mod. You'll notice that the back of the plexi is actually flush with the, the front panel, the, the back of it and the top of it. The threads are hidden behind the front panel. so. You know, it would have been terrible if they were in view. But there it is. You can see how all of that goes together. There's going to be no problems with strength. The sheer strength of those bolts is massive and the plexi fits into that front panel really tightly. 
I've now finished drilling the holes in the second blanking plate and I'm doing the test fit. So you can see how I've designed it. It bolts into the 5.25 inch bays. I have three bolts down there. Uh, I'm also using angle plate at the bottom just to give it some more strength. I'm attaching it to the mid plate. Now there's a big gap all the way up here. The motherboard comes right up to it. About There's about a 5mm gap left. So the front panel cables will drop through that 5mm gap. The SATA cables, they're actually behind the radiator but they'll go through that hole there. So all of the cables are going to be completely hidden behind that plate so I left a small gap around the motherboard tray there so that the motherboard tray is still removable without you know rubbing on anything the gap up there is for the front panel cables they come up and over that panel and go up into the top there and there's actually two standoffs and it worked out perfectly this panel actually sits right up against these the standoffs there's two one there and there I could bolt this blanking plate to them to give it more strength but then the motherboard tray wouldn't be removable and the blanking plate has plenty of strength the way it is thanks to the angle plate I've put at the bottom. Now the other thing I've done is marked off the last of the measurements on the mid plate so I've marked off two holes down the back here this is for tubing going down and back from the 480mm radiator in the bottom compartment. And I've also marked off the hole at the front for ventilation to the 360mm radiator. You might have been wondering how I'm going to get air to that radiator because, you know, there's no ventilation through the, the Plexi mod in the front panel. All of the ventilation is going to come from the bottom compartment and that's going to be plenty. I've also marked off the bottom panel for these mounts. Now these are XSPC 120mm mounts for the 480mm radiator. I had a number of mounts to choose from but these are the cleaners, they don't take up much space, they're very strong. They are the best to use in this situation. Here I have the bottom panel, mid plate and back panel. I've pulled apart the case again to cut and drill all of these holes that I've marked off. I'm now drilling holes in the mounts for the 480mm radiator. The reason I'm not using the existing holes is because the mount at the front of the case I had to push over the edge of the bottom panel. You'll see what I mean once I get them installed. I thought if I drill holes in one mount I might as well drill holes in the other so that they're both the same. I'd also prefer the holes to be in the middle of the mounts but that's certainly not critical. You can see here how close to the front of the bottom panel the mount is. The reason I've actually pushed the radiator that far forward is because I need a big gap at the, the back of the bottom compartment. And that's going to be for the, the drainage system for one of the loops and also so that I can get tubing down and back from the 480mm radiator. I'm now drilling a hole in the mid plate and this is so that I can get the jigsaw in to cut the ventilation hole for the front 360mm radiator. Now this is quite a large ventilation hole and there's a lot of air movement through that bottom compartment thanks to the fans on the 480mm radiator. So it's going to bring plenty of ventilation up to the 360mm radiator. Then the hot air from the 360 is going to go out through the top panel of the case but I will talk about the thermal design that I have in mind for this build later in the build log. I'm now drilling holes in the mid plate for the tubing going down and back from the 480mm radiator. And I'm using a 20mm drill bit. You want to be careful when using a drill bit of this size. If it catches, it can, you know, bend and damage the panels. So what I actually end up doing is drilling down as far as I can until it starts to catch. And then I use a grinding attachment on my Dremel to grind out the rest. I'm now doing a final test fit. As you can see, I have the motherboard in position, so you can see how it all goes together now. You can see the little gap all the way down that side there for the front panel cables. That's going to make things incredibly clean. Now, I changed my mind a little bit about the mid plate. Originally, I was planning on just mounting another panel on top of the existing mid plate but I actually just decided to cut out as much of the mid plate as I could so I've cut out to 20 millimeters I've left all the way around the outside except for at the front there I'll give you a proper look at that once I have these the case apart again you can see I've also cut the holes for the 6 pin PCIe 
and 24 pin motherboard power and I also have the holes and the fittings in there temporarily for the tubing going down and back from the 480 millimeter radiator in the bottom of the case. I've also finished drilling all the holes for these mounts and I've put them in position. There's no need for me to remove these again. The next thing I'll be doing down here is actually mounting the radiator. I still need to cut the hole in the mid plate obviously for the 360 millimeter radiator. The reason I haven't done that is because I'm actually waiting on the radiator grill so that I can get the exact measurements. So that's about it. The next step now is surface prep and painting. I did have one little problem with this design and I sorted it out. It's the 8-pin EPS and 4-pin ATX which need to go up there obviously. I had nowhere to put them. Originally, well with the original design of this case, they come up through one of the existing holes in the mid plate and then they go up behind the motherboard tray. But as you can see, because of this panel I can't get behind the motherboard tray so I thought about coming up behind this panel here and then going behind the motherboard tray. It would have involved a lot of cutting and modding you know of the back of the motherboard tray. It would have made a bit of a mess so I've decided to just go straight up here behind the 24 pin motherboard power and in between the motherboard and the motherboard tray because this case has massive standoffs so there's a big gap behind the motherboard tray. It works out perfectly. Anyway, that sums up part one of the build log. In the next part of the build log, I'll be doing the painting and starting to install hardware into the case. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and favorite if you want to see more.